Welcome to the Comma Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 Shrine Game profile and interview, episode two, if you will, two-ish, uh, if you will, with Puna Ford, defensive tackle from Texas. Uh, got a chance to interview him today, and just like the last video with Dietrich Nichols, uh, just going to give you a general production profile on him in terms of his analytics, in terms of how he kind of stacks up against other defensive tackles since 1989, and then give you the interview at the very end. Uh, so when it comes to Puna Ford, uh, and also defensive data in general when it comes to uh, market share data, um, all market share data is, for those that aren't familiar with that uh, sort of thing, is you take an individual def defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistics. So, for example, if a defensive tackle has 10 sacks on a team that has 40 sacks, uh, then that defensive tackle has 25% sack market share. Uh, but what you do with that number is you take that number and you compare it to every single defensive tackle performance since the 1989 NFL draft class and then you have a way of comparing how the all pro players performed how the pro bowl players performed and even how the starters performed when it comes to their production profile so all the data that I'm showing you today is essentially how Puna Ford stacks up to every single defensive tackle prospect since the 1989 NFL draft class and at the same time giving you some clues into what type of potential he might have uh, based on his overall data so uh, when you look at his uh, his production data, at least the chart right here, uh, Puna Ford is a guy that had an 88.15 solo tackle market share score, a 30.56 sack market share score, and a 38.98 uh, tackle for loss market share score. Um, as you can clearly see, the one area of his game, at least production-wise, that is really, really good uh, is his solo tackle data. You know, 88.15 out of 100 pretty much hits every single threshold you could you could imagine um, in terms of a guy with all pro potential and pro bowl potential at the position. However, you can clearly see that when you get into sack market share and tackle for loss market share, he doesn't quite fit in with the all pro guys or even the Pro Bowl guys when it comes to his tackle for loss data. However, despite the issues that he has in terms of sack market share and tackle for loss market share, all that really means is that he's more likely to be a guy that could be, become a long-term starter versus a guy that's going to end up being like an all-world type defensive tackle. Um, so this doesn't mean that Puna Ford is going to be a bust or that Puna Ford is going to be a terrible football player at the NFL level. Uh, it just means that you should temper your expectations on him if you're someone who thinks that he's going to be, you know, the next coming of, of whatever, you know, like the next Aaron Donald. That's just not in the cards for them. But still a very good overall production profile you know when you have a very very high solo tackle mark share score it says a lot about your ability especially at the defensive tackle position to go sideline to sideline and when you look at his film you know just giving you the film perspective on puna ford puna ford was always a guy that to me had that sideline to sideline ability at the defensive tackle position um, not exactly like Malcolm Brown, of course, who the New England Patriots drafted a couple years earlier, uh, but definitely in a similar vein, you know, does similar things, kind of like a poor man's Malcolm Brown in some ways. Uh, not the best comparison ever, but definitely in that sort of vein. And he's just a guy that honestly, on the right team and the right scheme, can be a pretty darn good run and chase type defensive tackle, uh, whether you're talking about, uh, you know, a three tech, et cetera. And uh, and so far at the Shrine game, he's been performing relatively well. Uh, hasn't exactly been uh, dominant per se, uh, but definitely has had a relatively decent week. Uh, I'm also going to throw some uh, cut-ups because uh, I was able to videotape a couple of him, uh, a couple of sessions of him in drills. So I'm going to add that to the end of the video. Uh, and of course, the rest of the video, I'm going to have the interview uh, of him uh, individually. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well uh, with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace. Uh, so what are you enjoying most about the Shrine game this week? It's really, you know, there's a lot of good competition out here. And it just, you know, go get better competition, you get a lot better. I guess, okay. So who's the best guys you've gone up against so far? Uh, 
the center, the center from Colorado State. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's really good. Yeah, I'm pressuring him. He's a technician. You know, he just he tries not to make mistakes and it works well for him. What's the best and worst part about being a defensive lineman? The best part is, you know, like we shine, we shine. And then the worst part is, you know, we do a lot of, like, a lot of dirty work, but that's the beauty about playing this position. Right. Um, what are the toughest players you've played at Texas or even high school? Toughest players? Toughest players for me, I'd say, uh, this year. This year? Yeah, it was very loud, sold out crowd. It was just electric. What are your thoughts on Sam Darnold? I mean, you know, in terms of like you know playing him and I got like I got all the tools in. Um, what's the funniest moment you've ever had playing football? Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, it's kind of hard. Um, <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. Um, which current or, for, or former players inspire you the most? Like, you know, guys that you look up to, uh, you know. Uh, you know, I, I got the spring of the year season with Michael Brown. He got drafted to the Patriots. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's somebody that I really look up to. Hmm. And just that, you know, I get to, you know, I learned from him my freshman year. I had to learn quick, so he showed me the ropes. And, yeah, hmm. he's just got a lot to do with where I'm at. Um, what do you consider the unwritten rules of football? Like, you know, just in terms of like things that if they get violated, like everybody knows, like you're not supposed to do that. You know, you know what I mean? But it's not really like written down or anything like that. Um, like just in general, like you know, like guys cross the line with something and everybody's like, oh, you know, you're not supposed to go that far. Or is there like no unwritten? I just feel like anything goes, like it's just whatever you get away with pretty I much. I got you, I got you. Um, which teammate or coaches would you consider Bay? Bay? Yeah. Like you put them, you put them up, you know, they, they'd be the one. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I had to say my roommate, Chris Nelson. Okay. Yeah, I was in high school, we were talking to each other, you know, we committed to each other. I mean, committed. deals with a lot of work in analytics slash data you know like stats and stuff like that you know you being a defensive lineman obviously and also a guy that plays inside you know you don't always light up the stat board and stuff like that if you were to like make a stat for defensive lineman you know or like think of something like maybe to add to statistics or whatever what would that stat be knockbacks knockbacks right 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 yeah, but it's like it really it really can change 